transformations of absolute value functions. Before we dive into these problems, let's go ahead and start by reviewing what you discovered through your exploration of the transformations of functions. One of the type of graphs you were focused on exploring was the absolute value graph. You had to take the absolute value graph parent function, y is equal to the absolute value of x, and then you had to discover what happens to that function when you add a value outside of the absolute value symbols. What happens to the graph when you subtract outside of the absolute value? What happens to its graph when you add on the inside of the absolute value? What happens to the graph when you subtract on the inside of the absolute value? And a few other rules. So now, let's start with the first. Our parent function, y is equal to the absolute value of x, as many of you described, is the shape of a V, which starts at the origin, at 0, 0. Now, what would happen if we add 5 outside of the absolute value? Notice that shifts this 5 units upward. Therefore, subtracting on the outside would shift it downwards 4 units. Okay, so adding on the outside shifts it up. Subtracting on the outside shifts it down. Now let's take a look at what happens when we add and subtract on the inside. If we add 6 on the inside, oh, that shifted it to the left, to where the negative values are. So this is counterintuitive. You might think adding would actually move it to the right, to where the positive 6 is, but we have to think of this backwards. It moves it over to the left-hand side. And therefore, subtracting on the inside, subtracting 2 in this case, would move it 2 units to the right. So that's what we mainly discovered through that activity when we explore the functions. And later we'll come back to what happens when you multiply the absolute value by a number. So let's go back to the topic and answer a few problems together. Here, the graph shows g of x, which is a translation of f of x equals the absolute value of x. Write the function rule for g of x. So now we have to write the function here. Start by clicking the absolute value symbol and start by typing the x. Always start with that. Now, from here we have to ask ourselves, what happened to this graph if it was originally at the origin? You should note that it shifted upward two units. So to show that it shifts upward, we have to add two. Remember, adding on the outside is what shifts our graph upward. And in this case, it is shifting upward two units. And then go ahead and click submit or simply hit return to save the time of clicking submit. Let's try another. This unit, or this graph, shifted up how many units? One, two, three units in this case. Again, start by clicking the absolute value symbol, type your x value, and now we have to add on the outside because we are shifting upward, and that's a total of three units. Hit return. All right, let's try another. Okay, this graph shifted from the origin towards the left. How many units did it shift? A total of seven units. So we are at negative seven. Recall that to shift the graph to the left, we are adding on the inside. So adding on the inside shifts to the left. We have to think of this counterintuitively again when working on the inside of the absolute value, when, when trying to shift it to the left or right. So adding 7 drags it over or moves it over to the left-hand side. And the proper term, as many of you already use, is to translate the function. Now this function has moved over to the right-hand side. So from the origin, it moved 1, 2 units to the right. Start with your absolute value symbol. And this time we're shifting to the right, so that is minus on the inside 2 units. Okay, we're going to skip over to another type of question. Now, if all you're given is this in writing, find g of x where g of x is the translation 9 units up of f of x equals absolute value of x. Just like before, start with the absolute value of x. Now here, you're not given the graph, but you are given a description. You're told that the translation is 9 units up. So again, upward would mean that we add on the outside, we add 9 units in this case. Let's do another of these. This time we're shifting downward. 
So after a while, you don't have to read the complete question. Notice I just went over to the number in the words. We're shifting down or translating downward in this case, eight units. So now go ahead and click the absolute value symbol, type your X, and again, think if you're trying to move it downwards, where are you adding or subtracting? We are doing so on the outside of the absolute value to move up and down. And in this case, to move down, we subtract a total of eight units. Okay, so that's the other type of question. We'll look at one more question here. Now, if we're given this graph, where the absolute value graph is upside down, we have to start by flipping the graph upside down. So let's type the absolute value of x. And we didn't discuss this um, in the current review of the discovery or exploration activity, but this type of graph did come up near the end of that activity. In case you didn't get there, to flip the graph upside down, all you do is throw a negative in the front. So typing a negative would flip your absolute value upside down, and we can quickly go look at it here. Let's say we took this absolute value function and we type the negative in front of it and we graph it, notice it is upside down. That negative flips it. Now that flips it, what moves it in this case? We're moving one, two, three, four units to the right. Remember to move left to right, we need to be on the inside of the absolute value. And in this case, moving to the right means we subtract, again, think counterintuitively. And in this case, we are subtracting a total of four. So this would be the function that represents the graph given to us. So you submit this and continue on with your topic. All right, good luck. Make sure you let me know if you have any questions by sending me an email or replying on Google Classroom.